Our Sunday School lesson this week is focusing in on our intercessor and picks up right where we left off at in our Sunday School lesson last week where we were talking about our advocate. We saw that we have someone who speaks up on our behalf. The intercessor is one who intercedes on our behalf. So the intercessor is our mediator. He's our go-between. He mediates on our behalf. In the court system, a mediator is essentially called on when two parties are in conflict, but they don't want to take their case to court. They want to resolve it out of court. So they call on the mediator to come between the two parties and to resolve whatever issue that they may be having. We have one who did that for us. The intercessor intercedes on our behalf. He came between us and the other party. The other party in this case is the Lord. So our intercessor came between us and the Lord to resolve any conflict that we may have. So it is a blessing that we had one to intercede on our behalf. Okay, because whatever conflict that you and I had with the Lord, that conflict being sin, uh, it was resolved. So we'll see the kind of, of intercessor that we have here in our Sunday School lesson this week. We are told here in the 14th verse that the writer of Hebrews tells us we have a great high priest. Okay, and let's make it very clear here that the high priest that the writer is speaking of here in the 14th verse, here in the 4th chapter of Hebrews, is none other than the one that passed through the heavens. We know that the one that passed through the heavens is Christ himself, as it is written in other scripture, uh, specifically in John's gospel. I always call on this scripture. We are told in John's gospel, the first chapter and the first verse, that the word was there in the beginning with God, and the word was God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among the people. That's what John writes in his opening chapter of his gospel. So, Again, we know that Jesus came from eternity and he dwelt in our world. We know, again, that Jesus is divine, that, that Jesus was holy and righteous as well. Our great high priest, again, is the same. Because, again, our high priest is Jesus Christ. Our high priest is holy. Our high priest is divine, which means that our high priest is perfect, right? Our high priest is righteous, okay? Now, while Jesus coming from eternity is very significant here, what's most important that sticks with our Sunday school lesson here in this 14 verse is the fact that we are told here that we have that great high priest. Okay, this is of the utmost significance for all of us who are of faith. Now, for us to understand the significance, we need to understand the role of the priest we need to understand the role of the high priest, okay? So for us to understand the role of priest, for us to understand the role of high priest, we have to go back to the Old Testament times. Uh, we have to go back to the temple years. We can go all the way back to the tabernacle years. And we'll see that the priest, they served in the role of essentially an intercessor. And what the priest would do is the people would come with an offering that they wanted to send up to the Lord. They wanted to make a sacrifice. They wanted to make an offering. They would come to the priest. The priest would take the offering from the people and they would burn it on the people's behalf. They would make that offering to the Lord on the people's behalf. So, again, they were they were serving on behalf of the people in a service that was to the Lord. OK, that was the role of the priest. The high priest essentially served in that very same role. The, the high priest on the Day of Atonement, which happened once a year. They would first take care of themselves. They would make an offering to the Lord that was on behalf of themselves and their household. And then after making that offering, they would take of the offering from the people. That was the entire congregation of Israel. They would take of that offering and they would sacrifice that offering and they would sprinkle the blood in the most holy place of the tabernacle. And again, they would make that offering to the Lord to atone for the sins of all the house, all the congregation of Israel. And again, they would do that once a year. Okay. So we have a great high priest who in the ninth chapter of Hebrews, we are told did that same thing for us. Our great high priest went into the most holy place and offered up blood, sacrificed blood to atone for our sins. 
we know that Christ is the propitiation, our propitiation. He's our atonement offering. No, Jesus didn't literally go into the tabernacle or the temple to sprinkle his blood. Of course, he shed his blood on the cross. And again, he died for us once to atone for all of our sins, the world, not just the congregation of Israel. We are told in scripture that God loved the world and that he gave the world his only begotten son. So Jesus shed blood for all people, the world, those living in the world yesterday, those living in the world today, those that will live in the world tomorrow. Jesus became the propitiation for all of our sins. So again, that is how he became our intercessor. That is how he resolved the conflict of sin that stood between us and the Lord himself. Okay. Now, what I want to do here at this point is I want to skip down. I want to skip these next few verses and I want to skip over to the fifth chapter. And let's take a look here at the qualifications of the priest, the high priest here. We'll start off by looking at that first verse. We'll see here that this verse begins to speak of the qualifications for one to be the high priest. And we are told here immediately that the high priest is taken from among men and appointed for men in things pertaining to God. So again, the high priest served on the people's behalf, but they were serving the Lord. Okay. So that was the role of the high priest. You know, that's what we just finished discussing as well. Now we'll see here in the second and in the third verse, we are told here as the qualifications continue that the high priest can have compassion, understanding. That's what that words mean. The, the high priest was supposed to be sympathetic to those who were around them, those who were ignorant and going astray since he himself was subject also to weakness. So the high priest that is being spoken of right now is not talking about Christ himself necessarily. It is talking about the common high priest, one who is man. Okay. And we're told here that the high priest wasn't supposed to scoff at others, wasn't supposed to look down on others because of their sins. We're told that the high priest was supposed to be sympathetic towards them, was supposed to be understanding of what they may have done or what they may have been going through. The high priest was supposed to be compassionate on, on those that were around them. Why? Because they themselves weren't perfect. They themselves were with sin. Like the writer said, they had weaknesses. They were sinners as well. So they were supposed to be compassionate. They were supposed to be understanding of what others were supposed to be, what others went through. And the reason why this is of the utmost importance was because the people weren't supposed to be afraid of going to the high priest. They were supposed to be comfortable with going to the high priest. They were supposed to be comfortable with going to the priest as well. Because again, those, the priest and the high priest, they worked on behalf of the people in service of the Lord. So the priest, the high priest, the people were supposed to feel comfortable around them, okay, to where they could approach them, to where they could go to them with their offering because they needed to, to make those offerings uh, to the Lord, okay? All right, we'll see here as our lesson continues on here in the next few verses here. We're told here in the last two verses of this part of our uh, this chapter for our Sunday school lesson, that this section states that the honor of being high priest was ordained by the Lord, just as Aaron was ordained by God to be high priest for the children of Israel. Now, notice here that the writer points out that Christ did not make himself high priest. No, Christ was appointed the role as our high priest by the one we are told here that said that this is my beloved son in whom I. I love. Okay. We, we know again that it was the father that said this. When we go over to when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, scripture states to us that he heard a voice from heaven and the voice said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Okay. So again, Christ did not make himself high priest. Christ was ordained the role of high priest. He was ordained the role of high priest by his father as well. Now, to me, what is of the utmost importance here, what we've seen here in these qualifications here is that Christ fit the bill, right? He did not make himself high priest. He was ordained the role of high priest by the father. Uh, we, we are told here 
that, again, the high priest was supposed to be compassionate. Christ was certainly compassionate. Christ was certainly sympathetic to, to all that we went through. Now, if we go back here in our Sunday school lesson and we take a look here at the 15th and the 16th verse, we'll see here that the writer of Hebrews makes it clear that we have a high priest that can sympathize with us. So in other words, we have a high priest who's compassionate. We have a high priest who understands what you and I go through. Now, someone may question, well, how can Christ, because you're saying that Christ is our high priest, how can Christ understand what we went through when Christ himself was without sin? Someone may ask, right? Well, we have to remember that Christ was in our world. He dwelt in this world in the flesh. And while he was in this world, he was tempted just as we are tempted. Even though he did not fall into temptation, he was tempted. So he understands the temptations in which we go through. While he was on the cross, Christ became sin itself. So again, he understands what you and I go through while in the flesh. He understands having headaches. He understands having hunger pains. He understands worrying. You know, it is believed that uh, as Christ was going up, that, that Joseph passed away and that he had to take care of Mary. So he understood grief. OK, we know that he understood that when Lazarus passed away as well as he went through grief, even before uh, he went to the cross. We saw him praying in the garden, earnestly praying in, in the garden about what was about to happen. So Christ is sympathetic to all that you and I go through in life when we are tempted to sin. OK, he understands what we go through physically. He understands what we go through emotionally. He understands what we go through mentally. He understands what we go through spiritually as well. We have a great high priest who is compassionate to all that we go through. Now, we'll see here that our lesson here, I want to skip back to the sixth and the tenth verse here in the fifth chapter to where we'll see here that our lesson, it closes out on the note that we have a high priest that will serve in the role of serving us, not temporarily, but forever. Christ, as we know, is eternal. Now, there's a name that we'll see mentioned here, Melchizedek, we are told here. And we are told that Jesus is of the order of Melchizedek. Now, this is a very interesting point. And for us to understand this point, we need to understand, well, who Melchizedek is. Melchizedek we'll find in the 14th chapter of Genesis, the 18th through the 24th verse. I'll bring that up for you so that we can take a look here at who Melchizedek was. Melchizedek is one who served as a priest in Salem. Salem was early Jerusalem. Okay. This takes us back to the time where Abraham was not even known as Abraham. He was known as Abram. So this goes way, 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 way back. Now, the most interesting point here about Melchizedek being a priest is that it happened at a time where the Lord had not even set his law. He had not even given his law. He had not given the guidelines for the priesthood. So Melchizedek, he served as a priest to the Lord outside of the law, outside of the guidelines. The law, the guidelines stated that the priesthood was to come through Aaron and his male descendants. Aaron and, and those who descended through him had a right to the priesthood. They had a right to become high priest. So again, we are told here, when we go back here to our Sunday school lesson, that Jesus was of the order of Melchizedek. Now, what that means is that Jesus, he served in a role essentially as high priest that did not fit the guidelines of the Mosaic law. Okay, it did not uh, fit the guidelines that was set for the priesthood that was supposed to come through Aaron. Jesus did not come through Aaron. Okay, Aaron was a Levite. OK, Jesus was of Judah, so he came outside of, of the the guidelines for the priesthood. That is why 
uh, it is said here in our Sunday school lesson that, that Jesus was of the order of Melchizedek because again, Melchizedek, there was no guidelines. There was no law. Je again, Melchizedek was just ordained. I believe he was ordained priest uh, by the Lord. Okay. So we, again, we have one who has interceded on our behalf. Uh, the one who has interceded on by our behalf did this by becoming our propitiation. Uh, he went into the most holy place one time for us and he shed blood for all of our sins to, to atone for our sins as our intercessor. We learn here today that Jesus essentially ended the conflict of sin that stood between man and the Lord. And again, because he interceded on our behalf, we now have an intercessor who is compassionate towards us. We have a great high priest who understands what you and I go through. And for this purpose, you and I, we should feel comfortable in going to our great high priest in Christ. You and I, we shouldn't be afraid. I've come across so many people that speak of how they are afraid to, to, to go to Christ, to, to pray to the Lord. You shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid at all. Because again, the one who intercedes on our behalf understands completely what we, you and I go through. He's compassionate. He is sympathetic to everything that it is that we go through. And again, he serves on our behalf by taking that prayer that we have, by carrying it to the Lord, delivering our message to the Lord. So don't be afraid, never be afraid uh, to go to God in prayer. Your high priest uh, is not going to look down on you. He's going to understand everything uh, that you have gone through. All right. Okay. So that is our Sunday school lesson for today. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson and I hope that you will share this lesson with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week as well. Until that time again, I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And let us again continue to keep all people around us lifted up in prayer. I will keep all of you lifted up in my prayers as well. And again, let us continue to treat all of those around us with grace and with love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So until next time, again, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you. And if you want to dive even further into our lesson for today, just click the description below. There are links to the commentary below as well. So certainly be sure to do that again. Until next time, may the Lord continue to keep and to bless all of you.